the things we were chatting about was actually that um, IDA and EI exist, and a lot of us don't know that they collaborate and they work a lot together. But before we actually talk about that collaboration and some of the work that the guys have been working on, I thought it would be good to go, well, what the heck do you guys do anyway? So Breed is going to talk about IDA, and Tom's going to talk about EI, which makes sense. So Breed, perhaps we'll start ladies first and uh, let us know what's, what's the goal of IDA, what, what are you working on, and then we'll look at the collaboration stuff. Uh, hi everyone, I'm at home and here in the room. So nice to see you all physically uh, at long last, it's great. So IDA is the government's uh, agency for the attraction of foreign direct investment into Ireland, as probably a lot of you will know. Like yourselves, we're public servants. And uh, our focus though is on the development of foreign direct industry here in Ireland. So our focus is on servicing, uh, sustaining and growing jobs through foreign direct investors. So the three sponsors here today, for example, will be clients of, of IDA as examples of that. So my own role in IDA is focused on innovation, uh, talent development, and, and transformation of existing client base. We have about 1,600 companies in our portfolio, and I'm sure you've seen some of the announcements recently that have come through. Um, that, that's the kind of work we do. So it's all about jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> so there we go. That's Tom. <laughs> Tom, over to you. So Enterprise Ireland, obviously the sister agency of the IDA, but our, our brief is to the development of the Irish-owned and natural resource-based industries. So in our brief, we also include all of the food sector, including the multinational foods. But across the, I suppose, our, our portfolios of clients, most clients would fall into the Irish-owned whether they're internationally traded service companies or manufacturing companies. That essentially is the mandate. So it's very much a challenge of developing the indigenous base of industry. And I suppose right at the heart of that then comes, you know, how do you develop it? The capabilities that you want to build, the connectivity that the companies have, and ultimately, I suppose, to grow the capacity to grow the jobs. That's essentially the mandate. And in my particular brief, it's the head the Innovation and Competitiveness Division. So a lot of the initiatives around supporting research and development, but supporting the wider approach to innovation, and indeed some of the programs that we have in improving the operational capabilities of companies, the lean programs, that falls in to my division. Yeah, and one of the things that we talked about earlier on was that innovation happens at the intersections, intersections of different departments, different people, different companies, etc. And that's happened in a way uh, from your work. So you bring in an, a an Amazon, AWS, they work with their government uh, teams here, and something comes from that collaboration. But what about your own collaboration? So I mentioned this about ways you work together. So I'd love you to share some of that. Okay. So uh, it's really important we do, because you, can you imagine the richness of bringing the multinational community with you know, a lot of their resources, their experience, and, and bring them together with the indigenous Irish companies that are growing here. I mean, that's a really powerful story. So that, that's why it's so important the two, first, uh, two agencies work together, really. And uh, some of the things, that, I mean, um, just as examples, um, Tom will share one with you and I'll share another. Most recently, we've been um, very lucky to secure funding from the uh, Public Services Innovation Fund. And we've developed what we're, well, we're currently developing using an Irish-based uh, disruptive technology company. And they are building a platform for us to profile service providers and service users from the multinational and from the indigenous companies, the Irish-owned companies, uh, to work together collaboratively. So uh, let's say a multinational company has an issue or a solution they require, they can go onto this platform, find that solution through the Irish base of companies we have here in Ireland and hopefully fix that solution. And what we're trying to really generate here is a connect, as Tom used the word, a connectivity between the two sets of companies to really drive transformation in the companies, but also to create jobs and to create competitiveness. The most important thing is by using platforms like this, we can really get our companies to grow. So very much like um, the stories you've heard to today from colleagues across the, the public service, how do you make things more efficient? How do you digitalize your services? How do you transform them? Because we believe if our companies do that, there's stick, they stickability with that. They'll stay in Ireland, they'll keep the jobs they have here and they'll grow more. So that portal is a really, really important one. It's the first of its kind actually, 
uh, between the two agencies and we've just started to develop it and it's somewhere where both sets of companies can go to find some digitally based, technology based solutions and there are some very smart multinational companies joined that platform and equally so indigenous companies. But that's on the basis of both agencies working together to find those, both of those types of companies and to build this platform. So that's one example. Um, and, and I suppose like it's worth saying, like it was a small Irish company, Dovetail, yeah. I think that has actually helped develop that platform for us. So, you know, there's great opportunity even for our client companies, you know, as we, as we work together. And, and similarly, in the innovation scorecard, which predated it, in fact, it was the, like last year's, as opposed to this year's entry. Um, to, and, and, and that innovation scorecard, Spanish Point, I think, was the company that helped us. And that scorecard is based, it's modelled on, on the new innovation standard, management standard, um, ISO 56002. And I suppose one of the, the challenges, I suppose, that companies have, um, a, a lot of our client companies, you know, they do a lot of research and development, you know, at different stages, all of that. But to get a fix on really where are they and how good is their system within their companies. So this particular concept of an innovation scorecard is something that we introduced. And indeed, it's co we introduced it in collaboration, direct collaboration with LDA Ireland. And I know it has kind of gone from there to being picked up by the wider you know, parts of the public service as well. So, oh, that's, we have been silenced very quickly. <laughs> um, I'll hold this. Yes, so thank you. Thank you've, you. You've, you've created a Tinder, a Tinder in a way. Uh, for, uh, a bit of a Tinder, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we must remember that. But, yeah. Coming on so, 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 so that scorecard really is, is something that's been picked up and over the last year we, we've had you know, well over 200 plus um, responses to that scorecard from people in industry and it is a great way of really getting a conversation happening about innovation inside a company. You know, where you have different respondents coming from the same company. And, it, you know, the experience is, is that, you know, what you might think in terms of innovation and how, where it's happening, the culture of innovation and your capabilities, and what I might think, working in the same company can be quite different. Yeah. And it's, this helps bring it out. But it also sets the scene for going further, for actually setting out on a journey, getting the roadmap towards really building an innovative story and innovative strategy for your company. One of the things that has kind of come up and we, we talked about it today and it came up in many of the, the panels and many of the, the presentations is there's two types of transformation. There's transformation of maybe a technology, an introduction of a new technology, but then that forces new ways of working. And if you don't do that for new ways of working, it's actually little bit lipstick on a pig, excuse the horrible expression, but it always comes up in innovation or as Seth Godin would say, a meatball Sunday. So it's kind of like, a, it's still a meatball, but it's got a little bit of sprinkles, a bit of cream on top. So there's this bigger challenge, which is actually changing the ways of work. And, and as you said there, Tom, trying to identify what's missing with the talent and introduce new ways of working. That's a huge challenge. And I, and I guess that's why that's in your role title as yeah, well, Breed. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And I mean, we don't do anything in isolation. So as Tom rightfully said, these scorecards and our diagnostic tools, they're all free for our client companies. Because what we want to do is get them to think broader than just one element of their business. So, you know, um, operational excellence is important, but it links to every other element of their business. So it's, it's important they look across, holistically, I guess, at their business. So what we're trying to do here is say to them, okay, so what's sustainability like? And what journey are you going on towards driving a sustainable business? What's your talent base like, as you say? So these tools help us then as agencies to have the conversations with the clients to enable them to maybe think about the bigger picture and how are they going to develop and grow their people to deliver a new way of working, as you say. But that's, the, that's what these tools do. And we're, we're just beginning to develop them now and refine them. And they take into account things like sustainability, talent, innovation, and so on, which are, are, are you know, key elements of anybody's uh, work. So it really, really helps to, and encourages the conversation 
for us with those companies. And that's then how we drive our, um, Tom called them the roadmaps, but also the support to companies, whether they're a homegrown company or an, a multinational company. How do we properly support them with grant aid? And we do that against targeted, proper uh, growth development plans. Not ones that will keep them where they are, but ones that will that will bring them on. And that's really important. Because remember, I mean, certainly from the multinational community, it's not too far wrong for the indigenous companies either. You know, they're in competition all the time with, in the multinational sphere, it's with other subsidiaries in Europe and abroad. And, and with, the, with the Irish companies, it's with other national companies trying to sell them, themselves internationally. So Ireland has got to be supporting the companies, and that's what we're employed to do. We've got to be helping our companies to be better for investing from and in Ireland than anywhere else. And, and I'd add that I think it's really important for companies to be thinking in terms of innovation in a very broad mm. sense, that it isn't uh, about research and development just. It is about that. But it is also about the way you do business, the way you approach the market, you know, branding, the way you organize your business, the business model. All the things that actually, I suppose, doing things that are new, that are creating value, and of course, you have the ability to capture that value, absolutely important. But the very definition, I suppose, of doing something new means that there is a level of uncertainty, of risk, of challenge for a company. And that's really you know, where I think the mind has to go in terms of innovation. And indeed, it's where I suppose the logic of why the state should be there encouraging that, mm. to, to encourage an approach you know, that people are quite prepared to take on change and take on the, the, the risks that go with it. But I would add that it is very important, nevertheless, for companies to be investing significantly in research and development. You know, it, it is fair to say we, don't, we do it. We do, a lot of our companies do some really wonderful work in developing products and processes, etc. But we need to see them do more. We need to increase the intensity of, of, of investment in, in research and development. You know, as a state, I think we still are falling a little bit short of the type of targets that, that we have when we compare it with, with our competitor, other competitor states. Um, and it's the vitality. It's the actual return that we get in terms of profits yeah. From new products introduced, be able to measure that, and to be and for companies to be able to judge themselves, and are they actually improving? Are they actually, you know, climbing you know that famous ladder that people talk mm. about? That vitality is really important yeah. index of performance. Yeah. So you can imagine that how difficult it is. So I, I'm a I'm an SME. I've grown up. I'm scaling up, and I have a product. I'm like, okay, now I've returned an investment. I promise it to my shareholders, my stakeholders, and. You do your scorecard on me and you go, Aidan, you're not putting anything in R&D. And I'm going, I'm trying to make money on what the original R&D, the original idea. So there's that challenge all the time. I'm sure you encountered that. And how do you deal with that kind of pushback that you're bound to get from people? Yeah, well, you're always going to have to, you know, to look out to the future. The past is the past and what you achieve mm -hmm. and, and, and what you want to see. Um, and I suppose this is the great challenge in developing an indigenous base of, com co co of Irish companies, is you want highly profitable, highly productive companies. There is a huge challenge out there to achieve the best results. But the one certainty that we can have is that the future is not going to be like the past, and you simply cannot rest on your laurels. You've got to be in competition. It is a challenging world. You must be able to compete. And if you're going to compete, you've got to continue to invest at staying at the top. If you're not there, you've got to invest more to get to the top. Yeah. It's like any competitor in any world. And isn't it fair to say then, Tom, that's where our job comes in? You know, that's about us trying to convince companies that, you know, this is the way to go. And this is how the state wants to support you to do that. So, you know, that's kind of our role then in that. So, um, and, and I get exactly where you're coming from. You, you know, you're an entrepreneur with a fabulous idea. And, you know, if you look at it, you think that's just so brilliant. And I don't know why it's not snapped up, but it has to be wrapped up in a business plan. And, you know, there has to be a need for it in the market and so on. So really that's where, where the two agencies come in. We bring the, the competence that we have to that fore and try and help the companies then to, to really grow out that idea and build a business plan around it. Uh, if, particularly if it's viable. So, and it's not easy, is it? I mean, some of the companies are, 
both in the multinational sector, I'd say, say you can speak on the indigenous yourself, Tom, but you know, they're a long time in Ireland. I mean, we have companies here, small German companies, French companies, small American companies, all over the country. They've been here like 30 and 40 years. Phenomenal um, contributions to the local community. And, uh, but you know, they're, they're, they're slow to change because they're trying to get the, the job done and trying to get the, the books out the door, you know. But um, our job then is to talk to their parent company, but also to them and say, but this is what you could be doing and how easy you could make it for yourself. So there's a bit of maybe a, a partnership to grow as well there yeah. between the agencies and their clients, uh, uh, equally as much as there is between the two agencies, I think. And, and we've yeah. seen some of that happening, for example, through our global sourcing program, you know, again, a, a joint program, which goes back yeah. and where, you know, more and more of these linkages between multinationals and, 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 and Irish suppliers have been built. Mm. Uh, and I think a key kind of part of that thinking is to go to move from being, you know, a supplier to be the supplier of choice, ultimately to being a partner so that when, you know, the large company is going in a particular direction, they're able to bring the smaller the companies. Yeah. And of course, when the smart, brilliant ideas that come very often from that small company, you know, the communication that exists with the, with the, you know, the large company is such, you know, that people can be the sponsors, yeah. et cetera. So it can be quite, you know, it's a two-way kind of street yeah. here, but it can be a very powerful thing. And, and in a way, isn't that one of the great assets that Ireland has? The very fact that we have such a strong yeah. FDI base of companies but what has emerged over the last 30, 40 years is a very significant cohort of very successful Irish companies. Smart. And more often in their wake. Yeah. So it's a really good story. Yeah. Yeah, really good I'm story. going to open up to any questions if anybody has any, just so nobody's disappointed. Yeah, I can't yeah. see it. You're under the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, the companies, uh, particularly when they did programs together, uh, their discovery was, hang on a second, that particular company already knows how to do this. Yeah. We're not good at this, but in this room, there is already someone who has the answers, right? Yeah. And that was sort of a, a light, a, a really important moment yeah. for them to discover. So are you planning to, to share the information or the data of the companies, at least between themselves, so that they can know who to talk to? Mm. That's my question. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a big part of our role, actually, and thank you for the question. It's, it's a big part of our role, actually, to introduce companies to each other. Which, you know, it's a phenomenal infrastructure here, and um, I, I, we, can, we can remember many, many large parent companies, particularly in America, saying to us, they can't believe the way in which um, the infrastructure works here in Ireland. The way you can walk into another multinational company or a small indigenous Irish company and they'll share their uh, journey in Ireland with you. Or that there's a massive um, research and development infrastructure through technology centres and innovation centres here and there. I mean, they, they, they can, for such a small country, as you said, Tom, it's, it's a phenomenal like, story. So we, we're constantly trying to connect companies with companies because one of them, as you say, can help another. And it, all, it never ceases to amaze me when companies get into a room together um, what, whatever, whether they're multinational or they're, or they're homegrown industries, how they just connect, share things. You know, I know somebody who knows somebody. We, we do that in our daily lives, I'm sure, looking around the audience here. Uh, companies do it too. It's most amazing. And it's a phenomenal infrastructure here in Ireland for that, actually. Re really is. It's a great um, value proposition, a, a great selling technique we have here for that, because the infrastructure is so great connecting people together. Yeah. If you look at some of the initiatives over the last few years, the building, for example, of the technology centres and indeed the SFI centres, you know, a key part has been, you know, that their, if you like, their research programmes are very much determined by the industry needs. But it's actually kind of the contributions in terms of defining that programme comes from both, you know, Irish-owned companies and FDI companies. So that's one part. And then I suppose another and maybe more radical step that's actually happened in very recent times has been the Department of Enterprises um, initiative, the Disruptive Technology Innovation Fund. Mm -hmm. And that has actually thrown multinational companies and Irish, you know, smaller companies together. So there's a great opportunity for collaboration 
Um, and, and that's something I think that you know, we would strongly encourage you know, companies working together and working indeed with the research infrastructure that has been created over the last couple mm -hmm. of decades as well. Yeah. Thank you, Juan. Anybody else, any questions? I, I want to ask, um, so there's been, a, there's been a change in the environment, so I'm not talking about the last couple of years, I just mean in the, in the realization that what I have done in the past, to Tom's point, isn't gonna sustain me in the future, mm -hmm. that the speed of change, exponential change of technology and AI what I have built is not going to last. Mm. So that means that a company now will actually see you differently as well. Mm. So it's no longer a source of funding, it's a source of advisory help. Mm -hmm. So that means a shifting of mindset within your agencies as well. Tell us about that journey as well. Very astute and absolutely right. I, I think uh, Tom would be right. I mean, lots certainly of our clients would look to us for different conversations now than they would have had done years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, some of the very, very large multinational companies that you see in the room, the three here uh, over the, the day, uh, you know, have a different uh, conversation with us than maybe a very smaller company would. And they're, they're on different journey, they're on different investment journey levels, and they're at different maturity levels. So, you know, our, our competency has had to develop and evolve as well, absolutely very astute of you to say. So, you know, we notice with some companies, we're partnering with them, with some companies, we're advising them, with some companies, we're trying to, you know, really influence and encourage them to do different things. It's amazing, like, the level of, of conversation and engagement you'd have with them, uh, because they're all at different levels themselves. But a lot of them sort of like to see us, which is very privileging, I, I think, as a public servant to say. You know, a lot of, uh, certainly the, the multinational companies like to see us as their partner mm -hmm. in, in trying to win new business for Ireland. And the green jersey goes on and all our companies are phenomenal for it. And they'll go out and they'll say, well, we want to win this activity. Oh, come on, we'll help you do that. And it's, it's you know, we want to win it against France or Germany, whatever, as I was saying earlier. And we go and pitch to the, to the HQ and you're doing that like as a partner mm -hmm. uh, arrangement. It's, it's phenomenal, like, it's very privileging. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's very, very true. We do very different conversations yeah. depending on the, on the nature of the company, yeah. And, and that's true for us as well. And I suppose one of the things that we've done, and maybe, you know, you could call it an innovation in its own way, yeah. is that we've put, you know, put a more structured approach to the way we engage with companies. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, those companies that have, <clears throat> have been established, have been around, I suppose have been <clears throat> on a journey of exporting and so on, you know, that meet a lot of the type of, kind of points that Enterprise Ireland is... Thanks very much, Aidan. Um, not good. Um, that Enterprise Ireland is particularly interested in. We have our engagement model, you know, which is built around, you know, six pillars. And these, uh, the whole idea is to make sure that we're looking not just at, you know, the idea of supporting kind of what it might do in terms of improving its operations or, you know, looking at maybe the research and development, but we're looking at the way it mm. develops its people, the way it approaches the market, the way it looks to funding itself and its overall strategy. So th this is all built into a particular model. And, you know, our staff have been you know, very much trained up in this. And, and that structured approach is something I think that you will see over time bearing a, a lot of dividends. Mm. But likewise, we recognise, you know, that there are companies that are in the much earlier stage. Now we have obviously our, star our high potential startups, which is a, you know, a different conversation. Mm. But a lot of our companies, we have a lot of companies out there who are small companies who probably have never gone on the exporting journey, but actually we are very, very keen to see them begin that journey. Yeah. And our approach there is to kind of begin that conversation, to put in place the type of supports, the training, opening up, I suppose, the possibilities that might be there. So that, that's a really important thing for us. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, you, you look at your client base, you segment it accordingly, and you respond to meet their needs. And I suppose in another way, I suppose one of the challenges that we've recognized over the years, and this probably pertains particularly to the indigenous companies, mm -hmm. is the challenge of building, you know, a, a strong management team, yeah. and particularly the leadership. Mm -hmm. And that takes as well outside the funding side. Mm -hmm. It is actually ensuring that there are programs in place, training programs and educational programs in place that actually help develop the leaders in our client base. And I'd say one of the most successful initiatives that we have, a number of years you know, running now, has been our Leadership for Growth program. Mm -hmm. And I'd say you know, right across the country, you, know, you have several hundred people, maybe well over 300 people who've been through that 
who, you know, who have been the leaders of our indigenous space companies. And I would say almost to a person, they would say that was one of the single most transformative mm. effects, events in their lives yeah. in terms of how they approach their companies. Yeah. I've spoken to a few, Carl Gaffney, Brown Bag, uh, Com Line, yeah. Fire, they all absolutely say that was, that was life changing actually. Yeah. So it, it only it changed them the way they viewed the world, etc. Yeah. But I, I thought, you know, to bring it all to, um, to, together before the judges join us again, like one of the things that you're all doing, and those of you watching us as well, and if you haven't, there's another round of collaboration of competition in spring, uh, in the new year, that what you're doing is freeing up resource, like so saving a lot of time, all the stuff you're doing, free up resource to be able to think. And I think that's why I was asking that question about you need time to think to be able to change, to train yourself. But if you're doing, if you're bogged down doing a lot of those chores that are not rewarding, how are you going to do it? How are you going to innovate? Because And it's not rewarding work. And I think that's one of the big wins for, from being involved in this project and one of the great things about this project. So um, I'd like to thank our guests, uh, Tom and Brida. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.